Hi, it's Dave. Today I'm going to take a first look at Roblox. They're a gaming and experience platform with 31 million daily active users, and they have recently filed to go IPO. So what is Roblox and what is its key insight and what does its future prospects look like? All right, so the goal here is to try to find the essence of Roblox, trying to find what their core product really is, and then we'll work backwards into finding what their business model is, what their competitive advantages are, and we'll look at, into valuation and their upcoming IPO. So first, let's look at their founder, David Bazuki. In the late eight, 1980s, Bazuki, together with his brother Greg, they developed a simulation called Interactive Physics. And this was designed as an educational tool that would allow the creation of 2D physics experiments. And this became kind of the crux or the core of their entire kind of platform that we're going to be talking about in this video. In 2004, Buzuki along with Eric Cassell, they worked together to build a prototype of Roblox under the working title DynaBlox, and later it was named Roblox. And the website officially launched in 2006, so they've been working on it for quite a while. Now, Roblox um, has some network effects, and so here's the founder in a 2016 interview explaining, we believe we're just starting to see a network effect. Retention is getting higher as more people come to play with their friends and have a better chance of finding their friends. So network effects is basically the phenomenon that as the network goes bigger, the value of the network to each individual user actually grows as the network increases. So Roblox is discovering that, that as more people use it, more of their friends are on the network and therefore it gets more value to the end user. Now, the core of Roblox is that David Buzuki thinks there's a whole new era of what he calls human co-experience coming, and that is largely enabled through technology and the internet. As technology is able to reproduce right, physical experiences through 3D physics and motion, and it becomes more real life. And because of that, uh, Buzuki believes that there's going to be a whole a mega era of human experience that's going to be shared online. In a 2018 uh, interview with Forbes, Suzuki said that they imagined a new category where people were doing things together that, that involved friends, so kind of like social networking, and also a 3D kind of like gaming experience, but also a media company and also something that people could create unlimited content and tools for. So this is beyond just a gaming platform. Buzuki really has an idea that hey, over the next 10, 20, 40, 50 years, right, human experience is going to go more and more um, online and Roblox wants to be at the center of that. Roblox is an extremely founder-led company. Now, David Buzuki, if you see here, he has 8.2 million in Class A shares, and then he has 57 million Class B shares. So his total voting power, this is before the IPO, is 70%. So in other words, the company is completely controlled by the CEO founder. He has 70% of the voting power and he has 12% of the outstanding shares. So no one's gonna kick out the CEO, and this CEO is, um, I believe, there for the long term. I've watched some interviews, and I'll share some clippets, but yeah, this guy is very, very long-term focused, and it shows in the structure of the company. All right, so what does Roblox do? And I think it's great that we can probably hear directly from the CEO, so here's a clip. What are some of the crazy things that you've seen people do and build on Roblox? We. Um we see a lot of things that we would intuitively not expect people to want to do together. So we see people who want to work at a pizza restaurant, which intuitively doesn't make sense, but people spend That's hours... aspirational. Yeah, people spend hours and hours uh, doing that. Uh, people do uh, like to do scary stuff together. Um, there's experiences where you can run away from hundreds of natural disasters and get scared with your friends. Uh, and we, we see a bunch of uh, more traditional you know, RPG and first-person shooter type games. And then we see uh, things that uh, actually are very educational, like Bird Simulator, where you get to be a bird and try to survive by finding bugs. 
All right, so here are the key insights that I think David Bazuki, the founder, and his team have. Now, these are the insights that kind of drive the whole, whole formation of Roblox and their uh, roadmap going forward. So number one, they have discovered that human co-experience is more important than gaming or an isolated category, meaning their vision actually is to move over physical experience into kind of an online place. Number two, their, one of their key insights is that safety needs to be a priority in an online society. So they're really looking at it as like building their own city or nation, right? And safety, decency, respect, all of this needs to be one of the preeminent values. And I think this is an important key insight. Number three, they believe that their technology and their company is building a platform. They're not just a single game like title. They actually have thousands and thousands of games and tens of thousands of developers developing on their platform. And they really want these developers to develop new experiences for people. Number four, they have a beachhead. And a beachhead is kind of like a grounding, a foothold. And they've attacked kind of the preteens and the teen market, ages nine to 15 is what the majority of their users. And that's an extremely difficult kind of place to be, um, especially because of the safety element. And because of their number two, um, key insight, they were able to do that. And I think actually it's a smart move. And from there, um, they have a good chance, I think, of growing and becoming a bigger player in different categories. All right, next I want to show a video about Roblox, their features, kind of what their games look, at, look like and what their overall platform experience is. The story of Roblox begins in 1989 with this simple block. We programmed a 2D simulated physics lab called Interactive Physics which would later go on to influence our approach to building the groundwork for Roblox. Students across the world used interactive physics to see how two cars would crash or build destructible houses. It was astonishing to see what these kids and teens were designing, and I wanted to replicate that capability on a much grander scale. So with my co-founder, Eric, we began building the core components that would become the basis for our imagination platform. Roblox quickly began bringing the world together through the power of play, harnessing players and creators of different ages and backgrounds from all around the world, connected by shared experiences. From China to Brazil to America, the world began to create as one. Friendships were built and a new form of entertainment was born. The Roblox world is growing faster than ever before. Creators are creating new genres, deeper narratives, and more diverse experiences that are opening up entertainment paths into worlds of play never thought possible. We're enabling the creation of more human forms that allow for greater self-expression, unleashing the limits of the imagination to enable anyone to be who they want to be. We're building a platform for a new generation, one that enables people to create and share experiences through play. Together, we are the architects of play. All right, if you notice in that video, David Bazuki, the founder, CEO, he talks about experiences, right? It's much bigger than gaming and it's a platform and it's almost like building an entire world or metaverse, right, of various people coming together for a kind of an alternative life in a sense. And this is actually very um, profound in some ways. And there are definitely pros and cons, I think, to what they're trying to do. In a lot of ways, this is gonna be dependent on how fast technology enables, right, the more real life type of experiences that people are going to go more and more uh, into in an online type of uh, platform. All right, underpinning this whole platform and experience is I think one of the most important key insights. And this is what you need to understand to understand Roblox is that their priority is immensely on safety. This is, this is one of their highest priorities. They say they aspire to build a safe and civil online society. We have no tolerance on our platform for content or behavior that violates our rules. So this is like a strict right uh, place. We have a dedicated team of over 1,700 trust and safety agents protecting users by focusing on detecting inappropriate content 24 seven through a combination of machine scanning and human mo moderation. We take swift action. Let's go into this a bit deeper because I think this really is one of the core and most important um, competitive advantages that Roblox has. 
So on safety, they leverage text filtering, content moderation systems, and automated systems to proactively identify behaviors that violate our policies. So they're using a variety of techniques, both human and also computer. Second, they have a human review team that is continuously operating to evaluate flagged experiences. During the nine months ending September 30th, 2020, our human review team evaluated over 68 million assets. And this includes images, audio files, and video files. All right, number three, Roblox operates a customer service portal that profiles um, self-help information along with ways to contact Roblox via email from within the Roblox client. And they responded to over 9 million customer inquiries just in the past nine months. All right, next, Roblox considers themselves a platform. Like some people have a misunderstanding uh, that Roblox is a single game title. It isn't. It's a m major, big platform where tens of thousands of developers are developing experiences and games. Um, so far, over 960,000 developers and creators have earned Robux, which is kind of their virtual, cur virtual currency on the Roblox platform. And there were over 1,000 developers that have earned $10,000 or more, and 250 developers and creators have earned over $100,000 or more in Roblox. Now, this is one of the key kind of focuses for Roblox going forward, is to develop the opportunities that developers have to increase uh, revenue, but increase their scope as well. All right, what's the business model of Roblox? When users sign up for Roblox, they can basically create an avatar and they can explore like all these experiences for free, but they also can buy this virtual currency called Robux. And by buying Robux, they can kind of upgrade right their experiences by avatars and clothing and various different things from the marketplaces in each game. And for each kind of Robux that is sold in the game, Roblox takes a portion right of that to kind of fund their operations. And they actually give a portion or the rest of it to developers and creators. All right, next, Roblox has an interesting marketing strategy. They have a highly efficient marketing model and they rely almost purely on organic adoption, which is actually quite amazing at this level. Um, they have a social network and they have network effects that help kind of spread the word. They also leverage their influencer community to increase brand awareness. All right, next, what does Roblox look in terms of people? They have 830 full-time employees, and of that, 659 are in product and engineering functions. What that means is the vast majority of their entire company is focused on product and engineering. This is a very product-centric company um, and very lean and efficient. The 1,700 or so trust and safety workers, they're actually contract workers, so they're not technically employees of the company. Overall, uh, this company shows extreme focus on product and engineering, and um, I think that's a good sign. All right, next is their China joint venture. In February of 2019, they entered a joint venture agreement with Tencent, and the agreement allows basically for Roblox to own 51% of this new entity and for Tencent to own 49%. And they will work together with the goal of building a successful localized version of Roblox in China. So that's kind of one of their expansion um, strategies. They're also in many, many countries around the world. And actually over half of their users are actually outside of the United States. All right, here are the five core values that Roblox adheres to from the very beginning of their founding. Number one, respect the community. They put the needs of the community above their own. Number two, they take a long view. They incorporate the long-term goals in every decision. And as I'm reading through right their S1 filing, I can see this very clearly. This is a very long-term focused company. Number three, get things done. They have a bias toward action. Four, self-organize. They define their own path aligned by a shared vision. And five, they own it. They own the outcome for which, um, for which we are responsible. All right, let's take a look into their financials. So what does this company like do in terms of revenue and what are their expenses like and how can we model some type of valuation for Roblox? Okay, so we have a consolidated statement of operations here. And I wanna look at this first line of revenue. This is how much money they're bringing in. I'm gonna explain a little bit more, but Last year, they brought in $488 million in revenue. The year prior, it was $312 million. Now, if we fast forward, the year 2020 isn't over yet, but in the first three quarters, they have um, brought in $588 million. So this is actually really fast growth here. Um, I would imagine they would probably bring in maybe between 650 and 700 million dollars in revenue and that's probably like a 35 maybe 40 percent or so growth rate from the year prior. All right here we have a bunch of expenses and uh, we need to understand kind of what their expenses go to. So let's look at it uh, one by one. 
All right, first is their cost of revenue. And their cost of revenue basically consists of third-party payment processing fees charged by various distribution channels. So Roblox is on iOS and Google Play and Xbox and Mac OS and Windows, and they need to pay a certain percent of all of the revenue they bring in to these kind of distribution channels. And so for iOS, it's like probably about 30% or so. It's a hefty uh, piece of change there to get just get on their platform. And then they have... Um, they explain this, yeah, that they're on Apple Store and Google Play, and actually these have higher uh, payment processing fees and compared to other distribution channels, and this is actually growing, right, the distribution to these kind of uh, more expensive payment um, channels. All right, the next category expense is developer exchange fees. Now, this represents the amount earned by developers and creators on the platform. So this is kind of all of the commission or all of the piece of the Robux, right, that comes in that they give to the developers and creators. And it's interesting because they're saying over the next few years, a major goal is to drive as much money to our developers and creator community as possible while maintaining reasonable margins and free cash flow. We intend to use future cost efficiencies realized in other areas of business to increase earnings for our developers and creators. So if you look at this, the priority actually in terms of um, revenue is actually not necessarily to rake in the revenue themselves. They want to give as much revenue to their developers and creators as possible over the next few years. And this is a strategic tr decision. I think it's the right one if you're going to grow a platform like Roblox. All right, next is their infrastructure and tr trust and safety expenses. This is related to all of their data centers, their technical infrastructure, um, third-party service providers, uh, cloud computing, data storage, all of that stuff, and also the expenses related to hiring their contract uh, 1,700 trust and safety agents, right, that keep the online uh, community safe. Their next line expense line is research and development, and these are personnel costs and allocated overhead for engineering, design, and product management, and data science, and other personnel. So this is basically... Um, people who are making the game better and improving it for future versions. Next is their general and administration expense line. These are expenses consist of primarily user acquisition expenses and personnel costs and allocated over it for marketing, business development, and developer relations functions. All right, so now let's look at their financial kind of statement one more time. And if you look at this, we have the cost of revenue in the first nine months of this year, it comes out to $154 million. This is basically all of the payment processing that they're paying to iOS, right? Um, Apple, Google, et cetera. This is a hefty piece of change, right? Just to get on these platforms. And it's in a way kind of bullish for Apple and Google and other people who control these platforms. Next is they have de developer exchange fees. This is the, the money they give to developers. This is $209 million right here. And that's uh, quite a bit of money. And that's kind of one of the major focuses, right? They're saying they want to increase the money they give to developers. They have infrastructure and safety, which is $185 million. And then they have research and development, which is hundred and $38 million. And then they have general and administrative, $64 million, and sales and marketing, which is $42 million. So their total expenses come out to be almost $800 million, so $794 million. But they're only making $588 million, so they have a loss of $205 million or so. However, there's a big caveat to this because Roblox actually has something called bookings, which they consider different than revenue, and I'll, I'll go into it a bit more. All right, so bookings is equal to the amount of virtual currency purchased by users in a given period of time. So this is a little bit confusing, but when you buy, let's say, Robux in your in the Roblox system, you would think that that would be revenue, right? But actually, Roblox considers it bookings. And the reason is because the people don't actually spend the money yet. They're buying the currency, but they're not spending it, so they can't really uh, put it down as revenue. They call it bookings. Now, let's look at what bookings um, are in terms of numbers. So... In 2018, they had 499, basically $500 million, let's say, in bookings. And then in 2019, they had almost $700 million in bookings. Like That's like 40% increase, which is great. Now, check this out. In uh, the third quarter, ending third quarter of 2020, they had $1.2 billion in bookings, right? Compare that to $458 million in the previous year for uh, first three quarters. So they literally like pretty much almost tripled um, their bookings in a period of just one year. This is insanity. And of course, this is partly the COVID effect with lots of kids staying at home playing um, 
Roblox, etc. But it's fascinating, like how much right revenue or, or the, what they call bookings are coming into uh, Roblox. So the thing about bookings is it's actually deferred revenue, and they actually have to recognize it over the expected lifetime of the user, and so they're actually. Um, putting it in their balance sheet as a liability, and then they're bringing it over as revenue, like quarter by quarter. And because of that, their revenue is actually lower than their bookings and trails, right, their bookings. So over time, their revenue will grow, um, but bookings will always be higher because people are continuing to buy the Robux, but not spending it right away. And th this is kind of like an accounting thing, but this is actually quite bullish because if you were to look at revenue as just bookings, let's say for a Roblox, they have a hundred, a one point two billion dollars, right, in kind of a revenue for the first nine quarters, and this would completely change, right, the income statement for Roblox. Let's take a deeper look. All right, so if you go back to the in income statement, they have five hundred and eighty-eight million dollars in the first three quarters of this year, but if you were to actually count, let's say, bookings as the revenue of one point two billion or so, this is actually what six hundred million dollars more, and that would more than cover the $200 million of loss. And actually they would have a profit of like $400 million just, just in the first three quarters. So it completely radically changes things. Let's look at how these bookings impact their cash flow. So for the first three quarters of 2019, they had $1.2 billion of bookings, but they had a gap loss of $200 million. But that is based off of their pure revenue figure that like is much lower at $588 million. So what happens is because they actually brought in um, $1.2 billion, they actually have free cash flow. So their free cash flow is actually $300 million that they're bringing in. So their balance sheet is growing quarter after quarter because their free cash flow is growing. And I think that's the most important kind of figure to look out for. All right, if we take a quick look at their balance sheet, you'll see their cash is about eight hundred. dollars and $1 million, it's just decent. They have account receivables, their total kind of assets is about $1.5 billion. In their liability section, you have deferred revenue, which is $904 million, and that's basically um, the revenue that they've brought in or the bookings they brought in that they need to kind of realize um, over time in their uh, revenue section. All right, I wanna look at some key metrics. So this is kind of small here, but I'll kind of tell you what's up here. So the daily active users, this is one of the most important metrics. They go from about 10 million a few years ago and now they're up to about 36 million per day right this is daily active users all right and then you'll see um, the hours engaged in millions which is like uh, 2,000 millions or 2 billion hours and it goes up to about 8.7 billion hours engaged and then you have average booking per daily active user and it starts out at about $11 and goes up to about $13 so people are spending a bit more um, but overall um, the bookings are increasing because the number of daily active users have increased radically over the past um, year or so. All right, let's look at previous valuations and what Roblox has um, received in past funding rounds. In February of 2020, they raised $150 million at a $4 billion valuation, and there were 630 million outstanding shares at a share price of $6.34. In June of 2018, they raised $150 million at a valuation of $2.5 billion. There were 550 million outstanding shares at a price of $4.53. So when um, Roblox goes IPO, they've already filed their S1 IPO filing. And I expect them to go IPO in the next few weeks. And what kind of valuation do you think that they will get? And I think that's an interesting question. It's challenging for a few re reasons. One is, do we base kind of their revenue off of kind of their actual gap revenue or do we just look at bookings? Because we look at bookings, this is an extremely kind of uh, profitable or actually lots of free cash flow type of business. And it did really changes how we value this company. Also, another question is kind of what is the long-term operating profit of this company? They've got a big chunk they need to give to Apple and Google, and they have a big chunk they need to give to developers and creators, and then they get to keep the rest to cover all their expenses. And so, um, yeah, operating profit margin, it's hard to tell at this point, but my guess is you know, it's a decently um, high margin business after they factor all their costs, but they have to grow a bit more. And probably the long-term target, in my opinion, is probably be around, let's say 30%, or maybe 25 to 30%, let's say profit margin. That's just my rough guess. Now, in order to value this company, there are different ways, but because um, they're not really profitable in the sense of their gap 
earnings, etc. Um, I'm going to use what some people call a P price to sales ratio or a sales multiple. Um, and this is used for, you know, when you're looking at kind of fast growing companies. Um, and I can explain this in another video when you might use kind of a, a potential earnings uh, profit multiple versus maybe a, a potential just sales revenue multiple. But in this case, um, Roblox has a billion dollars, I say hypothetically, in revenue for 2021. This is actually gap revenue. This is just my estimates based upon their growth. And if I give a 10 to 15 multiple off of that revenue figure, I'm getting about a 10 to $15 market cap valuation. Now, if we use the bookings uh, figure, um, it looks like actually Roblox, Roblox uh, Roblox might actually come up with almost $2 billion in bookings in 2021, my estimate again. If you give a multiple of 10, this comes out to be about $20 billion in market cap. Now, Unity is a gaming platform that IPO'd a few months ago, and their market cap right now is $40 billion, yet they have um, a lot more games kind of under their platform. It's a completely different thing because Unity is more of a, of a tool, a platform to create your own games, right, that you hope, well, uh, Unity will... Um, provide a lot of the, the technology infrastructure, but still kind of you're in charge, right, of moderating and, and running your own game and world. Roblox has a different kind of uh, platform idea. You come into the Roblox world and you make an experience within that world. And so it's a completely different market. Unity has much um, higher usage because their games are much more popular. Um, and I think, yeah, it deserves a higher market cap. So when Roblox goes IPO, I would expect probably something you know between 10 and 15 billion dollars if it's a very hyped market uh, maybe 20 billion dollars all right here are some final remarks or kind of my personal opinions on roblox after kind of doing a first look i spent maybe about five to ten hours researching kind of roblox looking at ceo interviews um, going through their s1 filing um, their financials etc number one is i think they have a very strong beachhead with kind of the preteen and teen market and i think it's actually ingenious that you have a market that's actually kind of quite difficult to reach in a safe way but they've cracked that nut and now they can move on to other markets number two their key insight of, of kind of having safety and prioritizing safety in an online community i think it's genius like this is actually perhaps one of the most important things in an online society. I had this idea, if Twitter actually had better safety and better decency, I think actually it would be like 10 times more engaging. And I think because that's like one of the limiting factors, I think a lot of times in social interaction and community building online. Number three, because of Roblox and their view that they're a platform, this actually becomes now a scalable technology. As technology gets better and they're able to replicate kind of human experiences, um, with higher fidelity, this actually improves the value that this platform is able to give to their users. And this is a long-term play. It's gonna take a while, but let's say in five years and 10 years, right? I think Roblox actually is in a decent position to increase their position, their kind of um, market uh, position and the market size. Number four, yeah, I said, yeah, they're dependent on tech improving. Number five, they have a strong focus on their developer communi community. And I think this is, you know, ultimately the right move, right? Because if you're building a platform, a lot of it depends on the ability for your developers to create amazing apps, right? And that's what the iOS and Google Play App Store showed us. Number six, this company has very strong free cash flows and it's because of the bookings, right? Are so much greater than the actual um, realized so-called revenues. This is another great situation. I kind of think that Wall Street might kind of underestimate and misunderstand Roblox as being kind of this, um, uh, unprofitable business that's kind of like off doing this fringe game for kids and they might look at it not as a platform but just as like a kid's game right and as a result i'm kind of hoping that actually wall street kind of underestimates and actually um, there isn't much hype on this stock and hopefully it goes down and it, it ipos at a very low valuation um, it makes it more attractive and it's just my personal opinion but you know that's kind of i think but with the whole market conditions being like they are um probably there's chances that actually there is a lot of demand for a company like this. All right, here are some further questions I have for research. Now, I would like to actually dive more deeply into the mind of the CEO, uh, watch more interviews, and look for a clarity of thought. Like, I'm looking for what their core strategy is, what their execution is like, you know, what kind of 
ambition and vision does this CEO really have? Um, I would love to have him on my channel if that's a chance. I've already kind of reached out um, via email, but we'll see. I'm also going to be looking kind of more into ethical questions like, A, is this really a platform and a company that I'm going to be proud of, right, as an investor? Um, you know, I want to look into some of their experiences. Like overall, does it provide more of a positive experience or, you know, is it more of a negative experience to kids? I mean, that's something um, I need to, and each person needs to look at um, individually. Overall, I think Roblox is a very interesting uh, company. And this is just based on my own personal opinion as a first look. Now, there's a ton of things that I still don't know about this company. I tried out their platform a bit, tried out some games and experiences, but I'm kind of a new newbie and a beginner on really understanding the dynamics of this company. But overall, I just wanted to provide a overview and kind of look at the general essence and the core of Roblox, what how they make money, what their business model is, and how I foresee them having some type of competitive advantage to carve out a niche and a growing platform in the future and in years to come. All right, I want to hear from you guys. What do you think about Roblox? Have you heard of people playing? Um, do your kids play? Do you know people, right, who've played Roblox? What do they think about it? And what do they think about the future of Roblox? Are they bullish on it or do they have some skepticism and some doubts? All right, if this video has been helpful, please like it. It really helps out the algorithm and consider subscribing to my channel. We're looking at investment topics in the world from different angles. We're trying not to just follow the herd, but we're really trying to get down to the essence of things, like a few levels deep, trying to find the essence of a company, a product, et cetera, their business model, and then working backwards to see like what type of potential they have with growth and expansion. And this is kind of like a unique approach, I think, in many ways. And it's kind of something that I hope my channel will grow in and will help a lot of people in analyzing more companies. All right. Also, all of my YouTube videos are available as an audio podcast. Just look for Dave Lee on investing in your favorite podcast player. And lastly, I'm on Twitter. My Twitter handle is HeyDave7. You can follow me there. And we'll see you in my next video. Thanks.